Good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen. This is O.P. Yadav, Editor-in-Chief of Indian Journal of Thoracic and Cardiovascular Surgery. And we are here at Chennai in India on the sidelines of the Joint Annual Conference of the Association of Cardiovascular Surgeons of Asia and Indian Association of Thoracic and Cardiovascular Surgeons. And my proud privilege to play host to Mr. Clifford Barlow. Welcome, Clifford. Mr. Barlow is Senior Consultant Cardiac Surgeon at the University Hospital Southampton in UK. And the legacy that he brings, incidentally, is son of Dr. John Barlow of the fame of the Barlow's disease. Well, congratulations, Clifford, for that legacy and thanks for being here. Yes, well, thank you indeed. Yeah. Now, Clifford, we have been hearing so much, so much, so much about total arterial revascularization, and seems like all empty words and empty thoughts just doesn't seem to be picking up across the world, less than 5%. So what is the problem? Is the evidence base lacking? Well, I think, I think that's a great question, and I think... It's a matter of the evidence being there, but the interpretation, the first thing to say is that cardiac surgeons respond to evidence. We like evidence. So when the syntax presents us with good evidence, we embrace the good evidence when we, we want to operate on those patients. We've put a lot of store in the ART trial. And unfortunately, the numbers just don't um, match up in terms of looking at the divergence of the lines. There isn't sufficient survival benefit to the patients who are randomized to receive bilateral mammaries. But dig slightly deeper, and if you look at the patients who did actually receive the mammaries, because 22% of people in that study didn't get the graft that they were intended to get, the ones who truly got the bilateral mammaries do benefit from it. Yes, as treated analysis does show that. Yeah. Exactly. And there's a, there's a wealth of um, other evidence, starting long ago with Cleveland Clinic data, but through more recent meta-analyses, some of which were pre presented very um, elegantly at the, the great AHS symposium that preceded this meeting, where there's been super and vigorous de debate. But these meta-analyses show the advantage of bilateral memories. So all in all, the evidence is there, but as you say, there hasn't been take-up. So what's the reason? What's the problem? I think, and as Einstein said, we keep proposing to do the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. result. We have fantastic masters of arterial grafting who are fantastic technical surgeons and surgeon scientists presenting their data. But ultimately, I think there are many surgeons who consider their solutions to be too complicated. Mm -hmm. And there was a solution that I proposed, which is a more straightforward means of arterial grafting. And what is that? Effectively, the evidence points to bilateral memories to the left-sided system. So while I think that there's debate about the benefit of skeletonized versus pedicled mammaries, ultimately to deliver two mammary arteries to left-sided targets, my preferred method is Lima to the LAD, yeah. and then Rima or Rita through the transverse sinus behind the aorta to the obtuse marginal. It's straightforward. It's, it's exactly the same skill set required as any other artery. Art, um, any other graft that you do, whether on pump or off pump. If it's an OM2 and too far round, then you're required to do a free rima graft. And then the, the crucial thing about using a three free rima graft to an OM2 is that the top end should not be directly to the aorta. It must either be to one of the vein top ends if you have a vein, or put a little vein stub on the aorta and then pop the I may graft onto that. But the objection to bringing the rema or the rita through the transfer sinus back of the heart is, should there be a bleeding point? And when you sort of lift the heart, 
Is the tension going to be an issue and those kind of technical problems? Well, firstly, one of the, 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 that's also an, an excellent question. So the criticism that I have of a REMA, pedicled REMA graph to the right is that the, ten the, the tension is more difficult to ascertain because immediately afterwards the, the graph might appear as if it's not under tension. But should the heart distend even slightly, as they do, if there's ischemia or temporary dysrhythmia, then the graph distends and then you get the vicious cycle. Vicious cycle. Whereas the graph through the transverse sinus will not be affected by the heart distending effectively. So it's easy to see if there's no tension initially. If there's no tension initially, there won't be tension. As far as bleeding points are concerned, well, it is a risk. But effectively, one can visualize some of it by retracting the aorta to the left and then most of it by retracting the aorta to the right. And what objection would you have bringing a rema to the front of the heart, to the LED and taking a lima down to the circumflex? It's all about the redo. We're doing these cases for patients to live longer. These are potentially young patients. And when they come back for their mitral valve surgery, their aortic valve surgery, I'm concerned about a rema crossing behind the mediastinum. It's difficult. One of the worst types of redo to do is a redo with a patent IMA graft. I think we'd all agree. And that's a lemur to a left-sided target, and they can come close to the midline. A rema crossing the midline, I know others have described a rema graft right up close to the vein and then to make it very long and come down to the LAD. I just don't see an advantage because that rema graft is going to the LAD and then you're using the lemur onto the obtuse marginal technique that I'd propose, as have many others, so the lemur on the LAD and then you put the rema behind the heart. And what are your objections to a composite configuration where you use a T or a Y graft? Well, we take a free rema, take it as many distal anastomoses as you want. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, John Puskas, Joe Sabig and I had fun at the, um, the, the conference here on Thursday debating this. I don't like T grafts. Effectively, I think it's somewhat anti-anatomical, and I know that one might argue that some of the major vessels arising from the aorta arise at a right angle. Yep. But those are small vessels, the celiac artery is small, compared to the aorta. The coronary arteries are small if they do arise at a right angle from the aorta. But there aren't many places where a small artery arises from another small artery at, at a right Thank angle. I mean, does the circumflex arise at a right angle from the LAD? Not really. But the other thing is, if we're saying that these arteries are the way God made them, then you must make sure your anastomosis is the way God would make it. And I don't like the flow dynamics of a T-graft, ultimately. Turbulence would be there. Well, I'm, a, I'm concerned about that. And also, I'm concerned about what the relative flow would be. Okay. So yes, a Y-graft with an acute angle, I can understand. But at the same time, a T graft, not really. But then one has another concern, and we touched on, a, we touched about that. We all know that we shouldn't use a radial artery unless there's a very high grade stenosis. We shouldn't use a rema to the right unless the right is occluded or there's a very high grade stenosis. Now, say we're using a, um, a T graft or Y graft configuration of some sort to the left side. So you have a very high-grade stenosis to a large intermediate or first obtuse marginal vessel. You have a 70% stenosis to the LAD. The LAD needs the IMA. And we're arguing that we would like to do a composite arterial graft um, to the obtuse marginal, which is fair enough. But what about the st a potential steel effect under that situation? because you're going to get lots of flow going into that obtuse marginal, is there potentially going to be a steel effect to the LAD? I think we've all seen the case where we do an, where we do an aortic valve, the patient has a moderate stenosis of the LAD, we think, well, we should put a graft on the LAD, we put an IMA graft on the LAD, we investigate the patient in 10 years' time, 5 years' time, and it's the so-called string sign the LAD is completely deteriorated. Now, my concern with that type of configuration is that 
there's going to be an effective steel effect into the, into the lateral wall system if the stenosis is not too bad in the LAD, and then with progression of time, what's going to happen to the flow? Well, I do grant that, but I thought we, that's a prerequisite for doing a composite grafting that we must have a balanced circulation in which both sides have tight stenosis, only then you go with it. But I appreciate your point. If there is a competitive flow on one side, then that could act like a steel. So that is a sort of a configuration one would like to avoid. How do you base your uh, do you have any uh, thoughts about technical considerations? Where would this Y or a T, whatever it is, you may prefer a Y, where exactly should it be made on the lima, the site, intrapericardial, extrapericardial, those words that John talked of, I always do intrapericardial and extrapericardial, people talk, I do it at the pulmonary well level. So does it matter? Well, I think it does matter. And the simple answer is I try and avoid doing it full stop. So the time that I end up doing um, Y grafts or T grafts is when I'm avoiding the aorta. And I'm an on-pump surgeon, and so it's the very rare case where I'm avoiding the aorta. But basically what I'm saying is the reason that there's 5% take up is because we've made things too complicated. Okay. Because great surgeons and experts have made things too complicated. So I'm saying, straightforward graft to the left-sided system from the right, straightforward graft to the IMA. You don't need to do the Y graft. You don't need to do the T graft. The third artery, the third conduit, maybe radial, maybe vein, maybe vein with maximum secondary pre prevention as far as that's concerned. Avoid the Y and the T graft, then you don't have to worry about it. And this configuration uh, problem that you talked of, does it hold true for even the sequential jump graft? You would like to create a parallel anastomosis rather than a diamond? Well, I, I, it's, it's all to do with flow. And I think that whenever one does a jump graft, the, the most common time in which I will do any kind of jump graft is when I'm grafting uh, two arteries in the circumflex system. So in a, an OM2 and an OM1, <clears throat> it makes perfect sense for me for a mm -hmm. conduit, whatever it is, usually vein to, to, to go across so that the flow dynamics are across the two. I don't like right angles okay. for, any, for any conduit. So ladies and gentlemen, we just heard Dr. Barlow give his views on simplifying the use of total arterial grafting or use of bilateral IMAs. He feels that there is enough evidence that bilateral memories are better than single memory, but then we have made the techniques a bit complex using all kind of complex configurations for use of these grafts, and that's probably the main reason for the low uptake of bilateral memories in the general population. Well, thanks a lot, Clifford. It's wonderful talking to you. It's been a very great ple pleasure, and I'm much enjoying the conference. Thanks a lot.